Lizards can be found at completely different ends of the food chain, with some being relatively small insect eaters, and others being giant apex predators that can even hunt man. In today's video we'll mostly be focusing on the latter, and there are a few giants that inhabit some of the world's most competitive ecosystems. In today's video I'll be ranking each of the seven continents by their largest lizard, but of course I won't be including invasive species. I'll be ranking the lizards based on their maximum weight in the wild, as some captive lizards can be double the weight that they are in the wild due to overfeeding, and these individuals are unlikely to be able to hunt successfully in their natural environment. Without further ado, we can head to our first location, and unfortunately for regular viewers, this section will feel like a bit of deja vu. To put it bluntly, Antarctica is simply too cold for lizards or any other reptiles, so it should be no surprise that we're visiting Antarctica first. There are a surprising number of reptiles that can survive freezing temperatures for parts of the year, but Antarctica is simply too harsh for any of these animals. Antarctica also has a very small number of insects and few plants to speak of, and these foods are what make up the vast majority of small to medium sized lizards diets. Around 250 million years ago there was a lizard looking reptile that could be found here, but if we go this far back in time Antarctica was a very different place, and it was still part of Pangaea. I'm still trying to find an interesting video idea for this series where Antarctica doesn't come in last place, but until then it will remain the punching bag and it slots in at 7th place. If you're looking for giant lizards then Europe isn't really the best place to start, but it does have a few weird and wonderful species. One group of lizards that do very well across the continent are the legless lizards, which are often confused for snakes. One of the best ways to tell them apart is to look for external ear holes or eyelids, as snakes lack both of these features and they're pretty easy to spot. The legless lizards of Europe mostly feed on slow moving invertebrates such as snails, but larger species such as the European glass lizard is large enough to feed on small mammals. If you go back a few million years one of the largest legless lizards was found here, with some species believed to have reached lengths of around 2 meters. A lizard of this size could hunt some pretty substantial animals, but unfortunately we still know very little about them. Most of the other lizards on the continent are small, fast and mostly feed on insects and other invertebrates, and there are a few geckos that can be found here too. Europe doesn't have as many colourful lizards as other warmer continents, but a few species really stand out such as the striking European green lizard. The largest lizard in Europe isn't quite as colourful but it's still pretty distinctive, and to find it you'll have to head to the southwest of the continent. The oscillated lizard is mostly found in the arid habitats of Spain, Portugal and southern France, with them commonly being found around olive groves and vineyards. Even though they are easily the largest lizards in Europe they still have to keep an eye out for predators, with many birds of prey and carnivorous mammals targeting them. Like most other lizards of its size it mostly feeds on insects, bird eggs and other reptiles, but in some rare cases large individuals will hunt mammals. This protein rich diet helps them to outgrow all other European lizards, with them measuring up to 60 centimeters in length and weighing up to 500 grams. This means that the oscillated lizard and Europe slot in at number 6, and from here on out the weights increase exponentially. There are hundreds of species of lizards that can be found in South America, and some of them have rare abilities that few other animals possess. The basilisk lizards or Jesus Christ lizards not only look like dragons, but as their name suggests they have the ability to walk on water. They do this by moving at great speed, and by spreading their weight across their large hind feet. They are unable to do this for long periods of time, but it's a great option for escape if they're being pursued by a predator. These lizards can also be found over large parts of southern North America, but there's another group of semi-aquatic lizards that are endemic to South America. The caiman lizards are completely at home in the water, spending most of their lives feeding on aquatic invertebrates and amphibians. If you ignore the head you could almost confuse them for a small crocodilian, and this reflects their roles in many aquatic South American ecosystems. In the rainforests you can find a wide variety of colourful insect eating lizards, but on land there's one group of lizards that dominates all others. Tegus are extremely adaptable lizards, being found in a wide variety of habitats across South America. The Argentine black and white tegu is the largest tegu species, reaching lengths of up to a metre in the wild. They have many physical similarities to monitor lizards, and this is a great example of convergent evolution as they fill ecological niches similar to that of monitor lizards. 
Even though these reptiles are native to East and South America, they are also famously found in North America today, and they have a massive negative effect on the native bird and reptile numbers. One of the reasons why they are so destructive is the fact that they love feeding on eggs, and only a few of the native predators are large enough to target fully grown adults. The largest lizards in South America aren't found on the mainland, as instead they're found on a group of islands that are renowned for their biodiversity. The Galapagos Islands are home to a wide variety of endemic lizards, some of which are truly unique. The marine iguana is the only reptile that forages for algae in the ocean, and it's incredible to witness them doing this in the surf. Algae makes up almost all of their diet, and once they return to land they are mostly lethargic, and can often be seen basking and shooting sea salt from their nostrils. Further inland you'll find a few different colourful land iguanas, with the Galapagos land iguana being the largest. These yellow reptiles can actually hybridise with the marine iguanas, although these hybrids are very rarely seen. Charles Darwin wasn't too nice to these lizards when he first saw them, as he described them as ugly animals, and he said they had a singularly stupid appearance. It's not as if Charles Darwin was much of a looker himself, and personally I think they're pretty cool looking reptiles. They are primarily herbivorous, feeding on many of the endemic plants of the islands, and they get much of the moisture that they need from plants such as the prickly pear cactus. The Galapagos land iguana is the largest lizard in South America, as exceptionally large individuals can reach weights of around 14 kilograms. This means that South America slots in at 5th place, and for our next section we'll be heading north. North America shares many of its lizards with South America, but it does have a few reptiles that can't be found anywhere else in the world. The beaded lizards are mostly found in the arid and forested areas of Central America, and the most famous member of this genus is the Gila monster. These reptiles are extremely powerful for their size, and they possess a powerful bite and venom which is used to persuade potential predators to leave them alone. The horned lizards are another group of desert-loving reptiles, and they've come up with a rather strange way of deterring predators. In most cases, they'll remain still and rely on their camouflage, but if this fails, they will puff themselves up before shooting blood from their eyes. Not all species of horned lizards are able to do this, but some of them can shoot blood up to 1.5 meters away. This technique not only confuses predators, but it also tastes foul to canines and felines, and these extreme strategies are needed as most species are very small and vulnerable. There are also many colourful anoles and legless lizards that can be found on the continent, but many claim that the collared lizard is one of the most beautiful species that can be found here. These lizards are called so due to the markings around their necks, and they're known for being very feisty and are quick to battle their rivals. Just like South America, North America's largest lizards are found offshore, with the true giants being found on the Caribbean islands. There are a few different iguana species dotted around the many islands, and the most striking species is also the largest species. The blue iguana is endemic to the island of Grand Cayman, and it's the heaviest iguana in the world. At one point in time, it was considered to be a subspecies of the Cuban iguana, but today it's been reclassified as a separate species. We are very lucky that this reptile still walks this earth today, as it almost completely disappeared off the face of the planet. It was most likely abundant before European colonisation, but by 2003 there were only thought to be around 15 remaining in the wild. Their decline was mostly due to predation from invasive species such as cats and dogs, but thanks to conservation efforts and captive breeding, they are starting to bounce back. Not only are these lizards rare as they are also giants, with a maximum weight in the wild of around 15 kilograms. The blue iguana slots North America in at 4th place, and hopefully their numbers will continue to grow in the future. Oceania is known for its vast array of reptiles, with some of them being the largest of their kind. The New Caledonian giant gecko is the largest gecko in the world, and unsurprisingly it's only found on New Caledonia. They can reach lengths of up to 45 centimetres, and they feed on both invertebrates and plants. The New Caledonian giant gecko is a great example of island gigantism, but on another island further south you can find a lizard imposter. The Tuatara may look like and act like a lizard, but they're actually the only extant member of a distinct lineage. Its order dates back to the Triassic around 240 million years ago, but as it isn't actually a lizard, it has no place on this list. If you head into the tropical rainforests of New Guinea, you can find another tiny dragon, and this reptile is very popular in the pet trade. 
The red-eyed crocodile skink is both prehistoric looking and adorable, which hasn't really helped its situation in the wild. Most crocodile skinks in the pet trade are wild caught instead of captive bred, which is bad news for their numbers in New Guinea. This island is also home to a giant arboreal lizard, but its name is quite misleading. The crocodile monitor is one of the longest lizards in the world, and it spends most of its time hunting birds and mammals in New Guinea's rainforests and coastal mangroves. It got its name of crocodile monitor as the locals believe that it gives warnings of crocodiles nearby, but it's also viewed as an evil spirit. In southern New Guinea and Australia you can find a very angry reptile, and it shares a few similarities with a certain reptile from Jurassic Park. For the frilled lizard, attack is the best form of defence, as it will often charge at potential predators with its colourful frill raised. The frill is used to confuse and threaten predators by making them appear many times their own size, and it shares this trait with the Dilophosaurus from a certain 1993 film. The largest lizard in Australia and Oceania is a monitor lizard, but this doesn't narrow down the potential lizards as much as you might think. There are 27 species of monitor lizard that can be found in Australia, with each species adapted for a slightly different way of life. The species we'll be focusing on today is perfectly adapted for the harsh deserts of Australia, and it's also considered by many to be the fastest reptile in the world. The Parenti, like all other monitor lizards, is mildly venomous, and this helps them to tackle prey such as other reptiles and invasive mammals such as rabbits and hares. They are the apex predators in their ecosystem, and they have specialised respiratory muscles that not only allow them to reach speeds of up to 40 kilometres per hour, but it also helps them to run for extended periods. If you're a small mammal or reptile in the deserts of Australia, then you stand little chance, as the Parenti can reach weights of around 22 kilograms in the wild. Some sources claim that they can almost grow to double this size, but it's been very hard to find reliable evidence of this. For this reason, Oceania is fit for third place, and the Parenti is arguably the most impressive predatory land lizard. Africa is the land of giant land mammals, but its reptiles are pretty substantial too. Some of the most interesting lizards in Africa are found offshore, with Madagascar being a hub of biodiversity. Here you can find extremely well camouflaged geckos, and a colourful selection of chameleons. Even the more bland chameleons are one of a kind, such as the smallest chameleon in the world. The armadillo girdled lizard is one of the stranger lizards of the African mainland, as it has a very creative way of preventing predation. Many lizard species will detach their tails to confuse and distract predators, but this lizard chooses to bite its own tail instead of offering it to predators. When threatened, it will curl up in a ball and bite its own tail, and this not only makes it very hard for predators to swallow them, but it also means that all of their spikes are facing outwards. This is how they get their common name of armadillo, but even this creative strategy might not be enough to protect it from the larger lizards in Africa. Like Oceania and Asia, Africa has a few different monitor lizard species, with one of the largest species being the Nile monitor. This lizard is found throughout most of sub-Saharan Africa, but as its name suggests, it's usually found near the Nile and other rivers. They are opportunistic feeders targeting pretty much all animals that are smaller than them, and they'll even target the deadly Nile crocodile by feeding on their eggs. The Nile monitor is considered to be the largest African lizard based on average weight, but there's another African monitor that has a greater maximum weight. Most rock monitors are smaller than the mighty Nile monitor, but the black-throated monitor subspecies is far larger than the rest. This reptile calls Tanzania home, and it lives a very similar life to the Nile monitor. This means munching on pretty much any animal that they can catch, and this allows them to reach some monstrous sizes. The very largest black-throated monitors can reach weights of around 27 kilograms, and this means that Africa slots in at second place. Asia is easily the continent with not only the largest lizards in the world, but also some of the strangest lizards. The sailfin lizards are known for their iconic sails on their backs, which means that they resemble extinct giants such as Spinosaurus. Just like Spinosaurus, they are mostly semi-aquatic, and they live very similar lives to the basilisk lizards of the Americas. The Draco lizards are a group of Asian gliding lizards, and they are capable of gliding to distances of up to 60 meters. 
This allows them to easily escape predators and conserve energy by easily moving from tree to tree, and you have to be a very elusive predator to be able to catch them. Of course, these small dragons aren't anywhere near the largest lizards in Asia, and once again, the largest lizards on the continent are monitor lizards. The Asian water monitor is one of the most adaptable lizards in the world, being found in a variety of competitive ecosystems as well as in cities and other urban areas. They spend a lot of their time in and around water hunting aquatic and semi-aquatic prey, but they are also known for taking advantage of the food and waste that we leave behind. If the Asian water monitor was on any other continent, then it would be the largest lizard on that continent. But of course, Asia is home to one of the largest land reptiles on this planet. The Komodo dragon is only found on a few small islands in Indonesia, and it's the undisputed apex predator in these areas. Its bulk and its venomous bite help it to take down mammals as large as water buffalo, and in some very rare cases, they have even claimed the lives of humans. In most instances, they can be persuaded to leave humans alone with a push from a stick or in desperate cases, a thrown rock. But if you find yourself in the wrong place at the wrong time, then it could all end in tragedy. The Komodo dragon can reach a maximum weight of around 150 kilograms in the wild, which means that the largest specimens can easily overpower most humans. This of course means that Asia easily takes the top spot, as it's home to the largest and deadliest lizard in the world. Now, as I'm sure many of you are already typing in the comments, snakes are technically lizards. It doesn't really make sense to include them as lizards in this video, and I've already made a video ranking continents by their largest snake. This is the same reason why I don't include birds in reptile lists, because even though birds are technically reptiles, it isn't really appropriate to class them as such when talking about modern day animals. Despite this, if you believe that there are any other lizards that I should have featured, then let me know down in the comments below. But for now, thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.